What is up guys, Speed here, and today I'm going to be telling you about 7 new item slash hero builds that you can be going to stomp your pubs. These are builds that are certified by the pros. Yes, they're being used by the pros, so no, I didn't just make them up off the top of my head. They're actually legitimate, and if you use them in your games as well, I guarantee you're going to have quite a bit of success. I actually think these builds are also a ton of fun, so yeah, if you're just trying to spice things up during this Battle Pass season, not only should you try out these builds, but you should also like and subscribe this video slash this channel because we post here daily and hopefully you guys become broken do you guys want to become broken i mean uh, that's the golden dota 2 right become broken if so the game leap website is 50 percent off right now i'm not kidding 50 percent off you're not going to get a better deal than this so if you want to sign up to the website to get top tier content from people like me right videos that you get on youtube that are simply exclusive over there click the link down below and sign up for GameLeap.com. It's 50% off. Alright, getting into our first broken build, we have Beastmaster in the mid lane. Yes, I think Beastmaster mid, specifically compared to Beastmaster off lane, is incredible. I really do think this. I think the hero can be quite a lane dominator. With his 60 plus damage, you can deny an insane amount of creeps. Combining that with boar, you have like over 70 at level 1. You can work to synergize your boar damage with your Beastmaster auto attack, you destroy. On top of that, you're one of the fastest farmers in the game. You control tempo like no other, and Beastmaster's level 15 hawk talent is insane. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Beastmaster used to, like a month ago, have a minus hawk cooldown talent at level 25. Then Valve is just like, hmm. Let's shift that talent to level 15, which is insane. It's legitimately insane. You bring your Hulk cooldown by 14 seconds and you can see the entire map at all times. It's an impossible for the enemy team to escape you. You always have the vision advantage. And now let's get into the items. So first off, you should rush a Helm of the Dominator. You could rush a Necro 1. I personally think that Helm of the Dominator is a little bit better in the mid lane as it gives you some stats. You don't really need the mana. You're not spamming axes, so... The Sage's Masks are not particularly necessary. It's a little bit better to have that crown and, of course, the headdress as well. So you rush up a Helm of the Dominator. You get that as soon as possible. I recommend you aim for a 7-minute timing. Then, after you pick up the Helm of the Dominator, obviously get a creep, buy boots. Then you go into the Necro 1, all the way up to Necro 3. And at that point, you can look and do a ton of different items. If your team needs help with magical damage, you could buy a pipe. Physical, Crimson. Physical as well. Well, Vlad's, or you can even go AC to buff up your own damage. If you think the game is really hard and you're having a hard time just staying alive yourself because of magical damage, you can also buy a BKB. And finally, the last items I would recommend are Blink and Shadowblade. Maybe your team is having a hard time catching an anti mage or a Puck or a Quap, and you need to get on top of them, or you straight up need to initiate for your team, right, you need to tank, okay, you can buy a Blink or a Shadowblade and simply get in for them. Next up, we have Offlane Tusk, and this is something I've been watching Boxy from Team Liquid use to great effect as of late. They also pick it with Windranger a lot in lane. The only reason why I'm saying that is because I think this combo is very cool. If you use Tag Team and Focus Fire, you shred people. And in just in the laning stage, Windranger has a really good attack animation and base attack time, so you combine that with the bonus damage from Tag Team in lane, and a Shackle Shot, and a Shards, and you can basically kill anyone. I'm not kidding, you can literally kill any hero especially when Tusk has level 2 tag team, no one can lane. It's pretty broken, especially if you're laning with, you know, a friend of yours. Now getting to the items, I recommend you start the lane with a ton of regen. Remember, the goal here is to be a brawler, so buy a lot of tangos, a salve, maybe a mango, a fairy fire, and of course a quelling blade to get last hits. Then you're going to want to go into treads as soon as possible. Of course you could pick up a stick or an orb of venom as well, depending on what your lane matchup is, but yeah. You want to get treads as soon as possible. Attack speed with your tag team ability works very well. Then you just want to be tanky. It's pretty simple. Just, just be tanky. The goal of this hero is to run at people, so buying a wand and a bracer is going to allow you to do that better. Following that, you can also buy an urn. I think the Sage's Mask buildup is fantastic for Tusk, right? Your hero needs the mana, so having wand plus urn will sustain you with that. And then Boxy typically goes for a Blink Dagger. He looks at this hero as a tempo controller. Which is totally fine. I think you could go drums or vlads, maybe even a pipe as well and just kind of frontline for your team, but Blink Dagger allows you to play at a ridiculous speed and of course save people with Snowball. Following that, the Blink Dagger or one of the small items, you have a lot of options. You really, really do. I mean, you can go down so many different routes with Tusk because you can play Utility or you can play the One Punch build, right? You can go Deso Medallion and just try to burst people or you can go, you know, BKB or vlads or pipe. It really depends on what your team needs. If you have a lot of DPS already, go a defensive build. 
If your team needs you to burst people, okay, pick up a Desso. Next up, let's talk about Clink's position four slash position five. This is something that I've seen Crit running. Unfortunately, they've lost their last two pro games with it. But the cool thing about Clink's is that the hero had one of the highest win rates in the pro scene over the last, I believe, month, or at least a recent tournament. There was a stat sheet that came out about it, and yeah, Clink's support was popping off. It had, I believe, a 58% win rate, which is obscenely high. This hero's abilities really do actually allow it to be a pretty good support. And so the item build that you want to go is in the laning stage by a Blightstone and six Tangos to start, right? You just want to right-click people with Searing Arrows. It's a pretty simple laning stage. You literally sit there, right-click people with Searing Arrows, and death pack the large creeps to get an XP advantage and health whenever you have it. Following that, you want to pick up the Sage's Mask as soon as possible. Clinks can have some pretty severe mana issues, so using Sage's Mask that will eventually turn into a medallion is a great way to deal with that. On top of that, you also want to have a stick. As I said, your goal is just to spam Searing Arrows, so if you have a stick and a Sage's Mask, you can effectively do that. Following that, if you are having a god tier game, you can just go medallion and try to kill everyone, or you can go boots, that's fine as well. Both of these items you'll be getting at some point, and you know, you combine boots, medallion, and stick, with a lot of levels, and clinks can basically pop off from there. However, I still will go into the next set of items. These next set of items are treads, then you can buy a wand, right? Just get a little bit of stats. You can be a bit squishy, especially if Death Pact is on cooldown. And then finally, you can pick up a Deso and a Dragon Lance, right? These two items in combination allow you to solo kill any support that doesn't have a Ghost Scepter. And yeah, that's the power of Clinks. You can just burst people from the back line. It's really hard for the enemy team to focus you as you are a support, but if they ignore you, you can just kill all of them. Next up, let's get into Nature's Prophet mid. And this is personally my favorite on the list, maybe behind Beastmaster mid. I love both of these, really. I really, really do. I played actually both of them recently and they feel so powerful. They really do feel so, so powerful. The reason for this is that these heroes in the offlane can occasionally get run at or fall behind in levels, right? But they have super hard level six spikes and it just do well whenever they can play high tempo. And whenever you're mid, you can play the highest tempo out of any hero in the game because you typically have the most XP. And so if you're playing Fury on mid, the goal, or Nature's Prophet, whatever you guys want to call it, the goal is basically to deny a lot of creeps, right? Use treants to get a lot of CS, a lot of denies. Then you want to buy up some stats, hit level six, cast your ulti, kill a lane, and rinse repeat. Farm, ulti, kill. Farm, ulti, kill. You do this over and over again, and you're going to snowball. Now let's get into the item build. So for starting items, you can go a stat-based build, a typical intelligence like circlet mantle build, or you can go for a blightstone and branches. Either of these work. Following that, you want to just buy a lot of stats. So a no talisman or two is good, or you can go no talisman or a wand. This obviously depends on your lane. Following that, I do recommend buying blight in a lot of matches. There are some pro players who do skip it though and immediately rush treads. Nonetheless, your first three or four items are two stat items, a blightstone and treads. This is pretty solid. Following that, you basically always want to buy a blade mail. Even if they don't have the best damage to actually reflect, let's say you're not against a Skyrath or a Leshrac or a Gyro, it's fine. You still buy a blade mail because it gives you armor and 36 damage. For some reason, this 2000 gold item gives you 36 damage and the ability to pop this insane active. It really is broken. And the reason why I say that is because no other item gives you that much damage for 2000 gold. It's pretty insane. Like, not only do you not get that damage, you also don't get an active, right? Think about Nature's Prophet as a hero. He can't really run away, right? Y your hero's super slow, you have no mobility spell. So, if you have blade mail and 36 damage from the blade mail, all of a sudden, you can man up. This hero goes from squishy and has to rely on positioning to just a tank. You just man up and frontline. It's pretty ridiculous. Following the blade mail, that's where you start to have some options. I'll give you guys a pretty streamlined build that works every single game though, and that is Orchid into BKB. If you go blade mail, Orchid BKB, you have a really nice mix of control, damage, attack speed, and then of course the ability to actually frontline and actually pick off people with the magic immunity timing that BKB provides you. Next up, I'm actually going to talk about a lane. Yes, a lane, not a specific hero. I will mention one of them and talk about their items in particular, but I think Lone Druid's safe lane with Witch Doctor is basically impossible to lose with. You beat anyone. You actually beat anyone. It's pretty ridiculous. And the only reason for that is when you hit level three, if you root someone, you cast them and you maledict them, there's nothing they can do. But now let's get into the items for Lone Druid. For starting items, you want to buy three tangos, a Blightstone for your bear, a Quelling Blade for your bear, and a Branch for your hero. Then, in terms of items, you literally rush phase boots for your bear. You get a lot of attack speed from your passive, so having phase boots is very logical. 
Following the phase boots, you're going to want to pick up a Mask of Madness. This just allows your bear to jungle very quickly and do a ton of damage. After the mask, you go Deso, and then things get a little bit weird. But Mask of Madness Deso is your major timing. It lets you take towers, solo kill anyone that you get a root on, and take Roshan as well. It's a very strong timing. So, you know, you can kind of just run over games with that timing, but assuming you aren't able to end or things don't go perfectly as planned, you can go into an MKB or an AC. And the last thing I want to mention about Lone Druid that a lot of people forget about is not only does the hero actually have a super high win rate in all levels, not even high MMR at all levels, Lone Druid is not even that hard anymore. They've made the hero relatively user friendly, but also you can carry neutral items on both your hero and your bear. So just don't forget, it's very useful because you can actually carry something like a Philosopher's Stone on your main hero or even like, I don't know, Vampire Fangs for the bonus night vision. And then you can carry like an Imp Claw or a Clumsy Net on your bear. It's extremely practical and very useful. Next up we have Batrider Mid. Now this one I'd recommend being careful with guys, only because a lot of players don't really know how to play Batrider and if you pick it mid lane and you don't really crush the lane, you're not going to do anything and you're probably going to lose. So make sure if you do end up picking Batrider mid, you try it in pubs first, or you understand what matchups it's good against. Some heroes that I recommend you can pick it into are SF or TA, even Death Prophet. If you play it well, you can solo kill them all. Getting into items, I recommend you go for standard stats. Just be tanky, right? Batrider has some of the highest strength in the game, so you can have like 780 or 800 health at level 1 and just dive people when you hit level 2 or level 3. Then following that, you want to buy a lot of movement speed. It's pretty self-explanatory. You build up napalm stacks and you run on top of people. That's what Batrider does, and so buy boots and a windlace. You can also buy a wand if you want to be a little bit tankier. Following that, you're going to buy bots. There are some other builds that can be okay, but I really do like the bots build. At the end of the day, Batrider re relies on movement speed and playing very quickly, right? The goal of the hero is just to be very hard to predict and to ruin side lanes, so bots kind of just lets you do that. Following the bots, you really do have a ton of options, and I'm not just saying that. You can go a plethora of different items. You could go Yules if you're having a hard time with certain spells. You could go Drums to go faster, Atos to control people, cancel TPs. You could go a BKB. Yes, you could literally rush BKB. You could buy a Blink to provide initiation if your team lacks it. You could even go Shibas. You literally can go anything. You have to look at the enemy team and your own team and say, hey, what do we need? Or what am I dying to? And if you can answer that question with an item, okay, well then buy that item. And finally, last but not least, we have Bounty Hunter Awfully. This one I love only because I just feel like it is so good and so easy for players to play. Uh, if you guys want to get into the offlane or you are an offlane player looking for a new hero, I think Bounty is a great one to pick up because he's just a simple hero. You take Janata, you take Shuriken, you Janata people in lane, right? You hit them and you chuck Shurikens at them and they kind of just die over time. It's really comical. In terms of items, I recommend you guys start with a Quelling Blade, six Tangos, a Salve and two Fairy Fires. It's a really well-rounded build. Following that, you want to rush Boots so you can get into Janata range at all points in the game. Then follow it up with a stick. Your hero is very often relying on trading, and if you do take Shuriken at level 2 like I recommend, you are going to need a stick to sustain that mana, and just to be able to play in and out, kite in and out of fights, which is very useful in the laning stage. Following that, you want to rush Phase Boots, a Wand, and a Bracer. Bounty Hunter offlane is very similar to Tusk offlane. You want to get a lot of levels, and then run at people. You can even turn basically into a position 4 going into the mid game. Let's say your position 4 is a Phoenix, and they want to get a lot of farm, or a Rubik, who needs his level 6. You can get a good start. Then, using that good start, run around the map with your phase boots, your stat items, and yes, you could even buy an urn as well. And you just kind of take over the game, because it's really hard for enemy supports to deal with a bounty hunter offlane that is running around with like 420 movement speed and just solo killing people, or at least tracking them out of invis, which makes it almost impossible to gank a bounty who knows what he's doing. And following up these stat items, I recommend you rush drums after that. I think this one of them is the most versatile and well-balanced. It gives you movement speed from Windlace, which is always good. Extra stats, mana regen, and of course, just the ability to overall go fast. Following that, you do have a lot of options, similar to Tusk or Profit. You can kind of just go whatever route you want, depending on what your team needs. If you're dying to physical damage, you could go Vlad's or, you know, a Crimson. Dying to magical, like they have a Zeus and a Skyrath, you could buy a pipe for your team. You could even, if you think your team straight up needs an initiator or needs to get on top of some sort of sniper, rush a BKB. Yes, there are pros who go phase boots, drums, or like phase boots, wand, BKB. It's an actual thing on Bounty Hunter and you just tear up the backline. You ruin sports games. They can't cast any spells properly. 
and you take over the match from there. But thank you guys for watching this video on my top seven new hero plus item builds to try. If you enjoy and do plan on trying any of them out, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel as we put in a lot of effort to make these videos you know, here on YouTube every single day. It is currently 50% off to sign up for the Game Leap website. If you're trying to become broken in Dota 2, use the code become broken in the Game Leap website right now for a 50% off discount to get exclusive content from top tier pros like me. The videos are very similar to what you get here on YouTube. So yeah, if you want to become broken and get to the top level of Dota, sign up right now for 50% off.